no one to tell us no or where to go. Ooh, oh, oh, hey little rich girl. Well done, yeah. Gregory Bistrisky. It's the belting she struggles with. Awesome. Welcome back to another daily video. Today we are looking at singing transformations going from zero to hero. From a cawing cocoon to a belting butterfly. <laughs> Later in this video, I will be joined by the amazing singing teacher, Sam Johnson. We're gonna be talking a little bit more about technique, looking at one of these videos. But first, let's have a lighting round of a few different singing transformation videos. Let's do this. First off, we have Tiffany Day singing the same song six years later. Six years apart, 12 to 18. I imagine a lot of things can happen in six years. You would always be Wow, she was very good already at 12. She sounds amazing. It's like there's an older person in this young body. For 12 year old, this is amazing. But if you want to be cool, cool. stuff like Adele's powerful vowels are kind of missing. That's what really makes that song powerful when Adele sings it. This is, of course, not as powerful. But for a 12 year old, this is unbelievable. She's on pitch so well. She's going to turn out amazing, isn't she? Same song, age 18. Let's go. I let it fall, my heart. And as it fell, you rose to claim it. There's so much good nuance here already. She knows what she's doing with the tone here. It sounds really great. My I love that little, it was like a half vibrato thing. Without fall. It's a very controlled type of vibrato because it actually goes between two notes in the scale. I love that type of little detail in singing. It's amazing. No, it's weird, but I set fire to the rain. Watch it pour as I touch your face. Ah, nice. Well, it burned while I cry because I heard it screaming out your name. Incredible, incredible voice. It was something that gave me goosebumps. The way she did like, oh, it's weird. I love it. It's so good. Go check her out if you liked her voice. I definitely did. Big ups to Tiffany Day. Next up, we have Adam Mission. This has got 5.2 million views. And it's called Incredible Singing Transformation Video. When a man loves a woman. When It seems like you had range from the start. That was pretty high. Oh my loving, I will send. <laughs> nice picture. I don't worry my life away. It sounds to me like he does have a fair amount of talent though. I've heard people have a lot more struggle with their voice than he is having. I said something wrong, how I long. That's pretty nice. Something wrong now along Take a sad song and make it better That sounds good Old Major lift The baffled king composing a new yard Whatever tomorrow brings Okay, so he was taking voice lessons the whole time. That's good. I think that you can grow as a singer even without a voice teacher, especially if you have the basics down. But right now, I am with a very great voice teacher and I've noticed a big improvement. I do go, I don't know, she wouldn't say. You stay with me. Oh, that was nice. And I feel so, nice. so Wow, he really could hit that Ryan Tedder type voice. That's really impressive. Run, run, lost boy, they say to me. I'm 
now a vocal coach. I teach singers what I've learned along the way. That's dope. Great work. Add a mission. Go subscribe. Let's move on. This video is a little bit different. This is a singer that was already good. I think it's pronounced Shooter. Anyway, she struggled with the song Chandelier by Sia. So she practiced it for two months every single day. So here comes her two months singing transformation as one month was not enough. That sounds pretty forced. It's a really difficult song. You gotta remember that. It's like high and it's very long notes and they have a lot of passion, a lot of intensity, right? It can be really difficult to hit right, <laughs> even for very talented singers. I'm gonna swing from the chandelier, from the chandelier. <clears throat> it does sound better now though, I think. I think she's uh, getting used to the song a little bit more, building some muscle memory perhaps. That falsetto thing was a lot smoother. It's the belting she struggles with. She sounds like she's tired. When I feel like that, it's like there's a lot of pressure coming, like I'm pushing a lot. You don't have control over the airflow in the best way. As I got so worried getting worse by myself, I asked my dear boyfriend for a help. <laughs> <laughs> She's willing to show herself just messing up, which is really likable. Yeah. So basically he's checking her support there. Thinking about breathing too much can really make you tense up more. So for me, it's not the best approach. For her, maybe it is. Nice. Close. That's nice. I like that tone. <laughs> it's noisy, not musical. I want to sue myself for noise pollution. <laughs> And after the final spurts of millions of tears. <laughs> She's so dramatic, I love it. Nice. Um, she did sound pretty close to Sia here in the end. The thing about Sia's take though is that she actually does do a lot of like noisy things on purpose with her vocal in this song. Because it's so much about the emotion. Okay, so time to get a singing teacher in here and get a bit more technical. Sam Johnson, how you doing? I'm so good. Thank you so much for having me on. Sam is a very, very talented singing teacher. We're gonna actually have vocal expertise on the channel today. Let's get started. Gregory Brzezerski. This is a brief summary of my singing journey. You'll hear where I started and where I've ended up over the course of three-ish years. So Sam, how long is three-ish years in a singing progress? It's a long time, honestly. He's not an old man and so his voice was not like totally settled. Most guys actually don't have their voice settled down until they're about 35. Then I'm expecting a lot. Okay, let's have a listen. A whole new world. No one to tell us no or where to go. Okay, I feel like before he starts working on his singing, he should work on just keeping his room. What is this? <laughs> oh my God, I can't focus. Joel, do you think that there's like a correlation between messy rooms and not being able to sing? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, my room is super pretty, so yes, that's what I think. What do you think about the singing so far, though? He's got a good sense of rhythm. That's really good. He's mm -hmm. on pitch for all of it. Yeah. His vowels are pretty good. Um, his dynamics don't mm. exist. Like, everything was <laughs> just the same all the way through. He's thinking too much. But when I'm way up here, it's crystal clear. 
that now I'm in a whole new world. It's gonna be interesting to see how much he evolves. Yeah, the highest note in that was the D. Ooh, <laughs> he hit the D, am I right, fellow ladies? As you can tell, I wasn't a natural singer. I've been struggling since day one. I would disagree with That's that. That's a lie. Yeah, yeah, you're a natural singer. You've got some inherent stuff. I started with no reliable range above E flat four. My voice would just break into falsetto or I would gel and strain a lot. That's very common, right? That's something that I struggled with as well. That's kind of like into the first passaggio. Yeah, that's right where that happens for most guys. Oh. <laughs> Okay, he just keeps talking down on himself. This is the whole like nostalgia thing. You look back at anything that's like older than two years. It's like, Ugh! I think that's built into most people. It's something that I actually have to teach my students how to get over, even for things that they just did. No matter how they sound, they have to come up with like two things that they like about it. Ooh. Nay, 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 nay. I became obsessed with singing higher right off the bat. At the time, I thought this would make me a good singer. This launched my obsession with figuring out my voice type. Is this a common uh, struggle, the voice type thing? Very much, 100%. What's a common thing your students run into with voice type? Caring about voice type. <laughs> <laughs> voice type started out as a thing so that we could tell well-trained opera singers what roles they should work on. It's carried over of like, well, you're a soprano because you sang soprano in choir. That's choir type, that's choir part. It's a totally different thing than voice type. That's super interesting. Man, this is why I watch your channel as well. I just think you explain these things in such a nice way. You should go subscribe to Sam, but not until you finish this video. Do you think it's necessarily a bad thing to try to sing high early on? I don't think it is. I think that if you're going to sing high, you should learn how to sing high. high. Obsessing over voice type ended up being a waste of time and was just a distracting from focusing on things that would have made me a better singer. Going back to what I was saying about having my students say like two good things that they like about it all the time. In my voice lessons, I try to just focus on the things that they're doing well. And if someone says, says, oh, that hurts, I'll be like, cool, why, where, and we'll try to work through it. But if they're doing one thing decently, forget about everything else. One of these habits was my tendency to engage the root of my tongue and sing with a Kermit oh. the Frog voice, especially as I went up in pitch. I have friends who sing like that up top too. It's a really common kind of thing. I also <laughs> notice a lot with some classically trained tenors as they go up high. Ah! Just so funny. You know, Sean Paul, the best singer of all time. Oh, also a little bit of a Kermit thing. After a few months of voice lessons and a lot of practice, my voice started changing. It became more open and free, and I got rid of a lot of my old habits. My voice developed slash coordinated pretty quickly. I found my mix pretty fast, and things were going well. Would you say there's one type of mix? What's mix? Yeah, what does it mean, Sam? Technologically. <laughs> mix to me is a seamless transition from a low note to a high note. I'm not sure how far apart that clip and this next one are time-wise, but after a few years. Okay, here we go. Big reveal, Sam. Let's do it, let's do it. Let's. Get excited. A tiger in a cage can never see the sun. This demon needs a stage, baby. Let's have fun. I see what he's doing, but he's struggling a lot more with pitch now. Yeah, his pitch is a lot harder up in that area, but it does sound like his approach is much more in. Mm -hmm. And so I think that if you are able to make sounds like that, don't give up. Like, yeah. don't beat yourself up because of the pitch. You just need a thousand more repetitions. Whoa, it's the sun. That was a high B. That was good. Yeah. But when he started it, like the A was on the woe, and you could see how open he was on the O. Mm. And then on circle, he used that er, which is actually incredible, but it kind of narrows everything. Circle of life, whatever it was. But mm -hmm. on the first one, whoa, whoa, he kind of overopened on it. I would like him to approach that first one more like he did the second one. Whoa, circle. I think would sound a lot more even. Yeah, sounds good. You sound good, man. Thanks, dude. I'm doing a little applause for Sam here. But I need now. Yeah, take me into your love and all. His approach is getting so much better. Mm -hmm. Just in his posture, like he's so much more relaxed. He doesn't care what he sounds like as much. And that's why it's working. You're right. The stakes are low, right? Because he's taking yeah. takes for something he will post online here. Over the years, I've just gotten better and better control. And my voice has become more consistent. I would never talk to a customer service representative like that. It's just rude. Gradually, more and more of the stuff coming out of my mouth would sound nicer. Uh, I like that. I'm a big fan of what you maybe would call a push vowel. I think a lot of people think that there's just one right way to do it, but it's just not true. Yes, ya 
ass. What do you want? <laughs> Ooh, oh, oh, hey, little rich girl. I just want to say I, I really appreciate the absence of shirt here. This is great. <laughs> this is how I practice now. I record a decent size clip, listen back to it, and listen for where I can improve. Do you think that's a reasonable way to practice? Yeah, I think that for people who don't have a voice teacher, that's going to be the most reliable way to get an objective judge of your singing. Because in our heads, we hear everything different than <laughs> if we would listen back on a recording. And in my head, I paint a picture. The sense I've come home in my body. I spend most of my time singing in this range now and it's paying off. I'm worried about this guy now. <laughs> he sounded great up top. No, he sounds great. I understand it. First start singing. Most people just want to be able to sing really high notes. And then we figure out that singing high notes is actually the easy part. And then we then have to figure out everything else going on. Why don't you come on over, Valerie? That's fun. Well done, yeah. Gregory Bistriski. If you like this, go subscribe to Greg as well. Okay, Sam, thanks for being in the video. Click here to go subscribe to Sam. Why should they subscribe? Because I want subscribers. <laughs> That's a great <laughs> reason. And click here for more music, commentary, and review videos. I will see you tomorrow in another daily video. But yeah, go subscribe to Sam. Go subscribe to me if you want to be a little better at being nice to yourself. That's super nice. Okay, guys, see you tomorrow. Bye. Bye.